Jeffries, Piper Sandler, all cutting their price targets today on Tesla. This follows a number of other firms slashing their targets after the electric vehicle maker missed first quarter delivery expectations earlier this month. But a company known as Bavarian Motivux, BMW, posting a jump in EVs in the first quarter, up 28% from a year ago. The not as good news, the percent of battery electrics BMW selling actually declined from 18% of sales to 14%. But still, more people are buying them. Let's talk about it all. Joining us now is Full Cycle, managing partner and early Tesla investor Ibrahim Al Husseini. Full Cycle invests in climate critical infrastructure technology. Ibrahim, good to have you on. Topic close to my heart. We talk about it a lot. What's your takeaway on BMW? What's your takeaway on Tesla? And maybe what's your takeaway on the industry at large? Nice to be here, Brian, and thank you for having me. So first of all, uh, we've all heard Tesla's core business decline. And, you know, we can look at uh, all their revenue streams. One thing I want to point to that is important that BMW doesn't have, which is regulatory environmental credits. Tesla generated almost $2 billion in these credits last year. And from 2009 to today, generated about $9 billion worth of these credits. Here's why this is uh, criti critically important to consider. Because as you look at investments ahead, environmental credits are going to be huge as we try to grapple with the multi-trillion dollar industry of climate change. And even though BMW increased sales, uh, their mix of electric and uh, gas-powered cars does not allow them to issue environmental credits. They actually buy carbon credits to offset their scope one and two emissions, uh, which I commend them for, and many corporations are following suit, but Tesla credits eventually will diminish as the tilt of other auto manufacturers, uh, the mix of uh, cars tilts more in favor of electrics. And that's not going to happen for a while. So that's good news for Tesla. And it's a high margin part of their business as they obviously discount their cars and have a hard time moving past the early adopter industry, which I think also has to do with the fact that a lot of cars are struggling to reach the a price threshold that the Inflation Reduction Act credits give them. Because as you know, uh, the federal government issued $7,500 uh -huh. credits for new cars, $4,000 worth of credits for used cars. But the cars have to be under $55,000 for a regular car and $80,000 for an SUV. And electric vehicles are just, most of them are too expensive to even benefit from that. So that's why the industry is slowing down a bit. How, yeah, that, that moat on the credits is a powerful one to your point. Um, and your point on cost, by the way, is also well taken. And given all of what you just said, how does the environment, the EV environment, look a year, five years from now? It's a great question. Um, so something interesting that happened, I don't know if you drive a Tesla, I drive a Tesla. Mercedes claims that their self-driving software is the best. I can't verify it. I haven't tried it. But all of us Tesla owners got the over-the-air download of Tesla's self-driving features last week. I downloaded it. I use it daily. Plenty of room for development, for improvement. It drives like my 97-year-old grandpa. But, you know, you want it to be safe, secure, conservative. Now, the $200 a month subscription is what interests me because how many people are going to adopt the $200 a month add-on for this service? I'm not yet convinced uh, that it's worth it. But if enough people adopt it and these over-the-air um, add-ons become part of the offering for all auto manufacturers, EVs, not EVs, it might pr might change the economics for the entire auto industry. I mean, Stellantis, Ford, GM, claim yeah. they're going to generate $20 billion annually from software services by 2023.